cool. Um, last night I, I was reflecting on the, um, the past, <laughs> I keep saying past week, but it was actually only six days. Um, and uh, I don't know about you, but I know that for me, it has felt like um, much longer in the most positive way possible. It almost feels like I've been immersed in some sort of other realm or inhabiting something. Um, and it has felt timeless. And uh, I like the word eons. So it feels like I've been inhabiting something for some eons at this point in time. I actually can't remember what I was doing before uh, we began this retreat. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, <clears throat> Over the course of the retreat, of course, uh, we've been we've been visiting the Pali Canon in a way that um, I know for me has brought it very much to life. You know, the stories that that have been getting told, and you may have been struck in particular by by one of the stories or one of the characters that we met. We've met men and women. We've been on. Um, journeys to amazing, incredible, beautiful places, Emerald Mountains and Tirna Nog and the realms of the, the Buddhas. And we've also been, been um, inhabiting the divine abodes through the practices, of course, the Brahma Viharas and through the, the actual meditative practices that we have been doing over the course of the six days. And I don't know if you remember, but I, I referred to the act of compassion and one of our, the acts of compassion that we can do is, is to take time out and to meditate. Compassion for ourselves and compassion for the world. But now it's time to prepare to step back out into the world, into our mundane daily lives and the chaos that's outside our doors. Um, And so as I continued to reflect, of course, my mind went back to Green Tara. She, she's very much part of my, my daily life as, as part of my, my daily visualization practice. Uh, but she definitely does um, make her presence known throughout my day. And what I've been thinking about in particular is, is the posture of her, um, particularly her hands and her feet. And if you remember, her left leg is drawn up in meditation pose. Her left foot is, is sometimes just sitting on the moon mat, but sometimes it's actually sitting on the, um, the, uh, the right thigh, um, the more flexible versions of her. <laughs> and that is very much a reminder that we need to meditate, that we need to go on retreat. At least that is what it symbolizes for me. I find um, yeah, everything about Tara very strongly symbolic as well as um, very real and alive. Her right foot is stepping out into the world and it, there's almost an energy to it. She's stepping out and if you remember that, that, that blue lotus grew with a moon mat for her to rest her foot on. But that was really just the springboard for her to, to, to move out into the world. And she's moving out into the world um, faster than any of us can even think that we need her in our, in our presence. And that is a reminder for me that part of my practice, part of my Dharma life, isn't just all about meditation. It isn't just about reflecting on, in this case, Brahma Viharas um, or on other teachings or um, even on my favorite subject, the Satipatthana Sutta. The, the foundations of mindfulness. It's about taking action. Um, one of the ways that I describe Tara, because I, I, I would wear a little pendant that symbolizes Tara. And when people who are not Buddhist ask me, what does it mean? I usually say it represents compassion in action. And uh, usually it's when I'm at work. So they go, oh, now I understand why you wear it because of the type of work I do. 
makes compassion in action quite, quite easy to do on a daily basis. So again, what I would say is, if you remember, I, I touched on how compassion can start in small steps. And it can start with simply helping someone with the washing up. It can start with wishing someone well. You know, even just, I, I started a practice um, probably late last year uh, because I live in a, a small village and um, I, I took to walking and I began to notice that I was meeting the same people um, at the times I would go walking. But what I also began to notice was some of them appeared to be quite withdrawn, almost sullen. I'm thinking of um, two particular characters. So um, as I said, you know, Tara has a mischievous side. She has a, um, a humorous side to her. She has a sense of humor. So there was a little part of that in me that thought, well, I'm going to reach out to these people and I'm just going to keep saying hello and I'm just going to keep doing it and see what happens. And I had absolutely no idea what would happen, apart from that they might just think I'm a bit strange, you know, strange, nutty woman that walks around in strange attire and um, saying hello to everybody. But over the months, what has happened is, is that um, in particular, those two people, um, they have actually started to greet me. And it's turned out one of them actually has uh, very, very little English, I've discovered. So um, that's been part of the reason why there's, there's no further conversation. But I see the head come up and the greeting now. And the other individual, um, we've actually had um, short conversations at this stage. And now again, when I see him on the street, I notice the whole body language change. and. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm just glad that perhaps I've brought a little ray of light or sunshine or perhaps just been the only person they've spoken to all week. Um, I was struck by somebody saying that, particularly during lockdown, that some people aren't seeing um, others. And so uh, the simple act of saying hello can be an act of kindness and compassion. But I'm going to go on a little bit more about the other Brahma Viharas. So I'm going to, uh, I want to come back to Tara again. And <clears throat> moving up to her hands, her left hand is in this, this posture. And this is the act of fearlessness, sorry, the mudra of fearlessness, I should say. Um, you'll often see a Moga City um, with, with the fully open palm. And um, it's, it's that sense of fearlessness. It's quite interesting, actually, you know, if you, if you even do it as a, as, a, as a mudra, there is something about the energy of it. Um, I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to let you feel into that. So the, the, the significant thing about this is, is that not only is she offering us the gift of fearlessness, she's holding the, 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 um, the blue lotus flower. Um, and so the fingers are down, but that significantly means that she has three fingers pointing up. So what she's actually telling us is, is that we can be fearless because we have the gift of the three jewels in our lives. So we have the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. And again, that's really significant. We have the Buddha, the ideal of enlightenment, you know, as we say in the pujas um, to which we aspire. So we all have the capacity to reach enlightenment, to reach awakening. So that's the first thing. The Dharma, the teachings, well, you've all been on retreat. So we've been immersed in, in, in the Dharma. And the Sangha, again, we've been on retreat and it's not, it's not an in-person retreat, but there's still been a sense of community and we can support one another you know, in Sangha, in community, in so many different ways. And that gives us the courage to each and every one of us to then move out into the world and radiate the Dharma, and in this case, the, the Brahma Viharas in our own way. And sometimes we don't even have to say anything. It just, it just radiates from us. People pick up on it. So again, I like to just sit with that posture and just feel it and, and just imagine what it would be like. 
to be able to live fearlessly and not be afraid to to live a fully um, life in the fullest way of an enlightened being. If that makes sense. Her other hand is pointing downward. I, I can't show it on the screen, so it, it is point. Okay, it's it's pointing downward. So the fingers are pointing down to the ground. Again, some uh, images of her, you will see her holding another lotus flower, but in some she's um, she's simply um, got the palm out, and that is the mudra or the posture of um, ultimate generosity. So she's she's ever giving. She's ever giving. And generosity is an interesting one for me because I think for, for a long, long time, I thought it was that sense of to give and not to account the costs, uh, to quote. I think someone else quoted that this week and it's from a prayer, um, I recently looked it up, a prayer by St. Augustine. To give and not to count the costs, to fight and not to heed the wounds. So <clears throat> I thought that I had to give and give and give and give, but of course what did happen, as I've said, is, is that I burnt out. Now, when a bodhisattva or a Buddha is, is giving the gift of generosity. They're giving it from that place of deep practice, from the embodiment of the Dharma, you know, from that, 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 that ultimate place that we all are moving toward. So when we are giving the gift of generosity, you know, we're, we're giving it from this place, the place of fearlessness, because we have the support of the three jewels in our lives. And so the gift of generosity becomes something that has more of a flow to it. There's not a rigidity to it. And it's not that I'm giving just because I need to be good or, 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 or whatever, whatever way you do it. I mean, once again, the, the gift of generosity, we can give in so many ways. Very often when we talk about Dana um, and generosity, people immediately think that we're talking about money. Um, or, or material goods. And it doesn't have to be that. Um, it, it can be those simple, small things. I was trying to find a reference um, in some of the teachings. There's a reference to how when we're, we're learning the act of generosity, and we start small, and I think it's a half a cup of salt or sugar that's referred to. Um, I'll be waiting for some of the, the academics to come back to me on it. Um, so we start small and what, <laughs> and what happens is, is that, um, well, have you ever given something like that? You know, something spontaneously or if a neighbor knocks on the door and says, oh, I'm in the middle of doing something, have you a bit of salt? You, you spontaneously just want to give um, gen generally. Or as somebody in one of the groups um, during the week was saying, their neighbor went shopping and, and sent a message saying, you know, do you need anything in the shop? You know, these are these are little, little simple acts. But what happens is, is that they're acts that not only open our heart a little more, but they open the heart of, of the person at the receiving end. And then the other thing that begins to happen is, is that barrier, that boundary, that that uh, curtain that we close between ourselves and others begins to dissolve. I came across um, another favorite book of mine, Living with Kindness. And I came across um, a quotation in it, if I can find it now. And in it, what Bhante Sangrachita is saying is, when we're taking meta towards insight, um, realizing the truth of egolessness simply means being truly and deeply unselfish. So what happens when we're, we're, we're simply giving, even in the simple, small ways day to day, we're breaking down that barrier of ego. Each time we do it and self isn't in there, um, again, uh, Bante uh, references a handkerchief. Um, it has to be a handkerchief, not a tissue. And uh, it was pre-COVID days. But basically, if, you, if uh, someone drops a handkerchief, your instinct is to naturally pick it up and, and hand it back to them. There's no thought about it. 
it's just something that we do spontaneously in those situations. You know, someone drops a glove or something, you'd say, excuse me, you dropped this. Recently, I, um, I was in a supermarket and um, a young chap, he was obviously on his lunch break and he'd come in, I presume for his lunch, I don't know, but he was looking for something. And the next thing was his wallet fell out of the back pocket of his work trousers and he hadn't noticed because he was in a hurry and he continued to run around the aisles. So without a second thought, I picked up the wallet and ran after him until I could, and he, he was going quite fast. So eventually I was able to go, excuse me, and wave his wallet at him. Now, again, it, there wasn't a second thought about it. Um, and then I saw the relief on his, his face. Um, yeah, and, and um, his gratitude. And, and it was just, it was one of those little heart melting moments. As I say, the, the beginning of, the, of it, I hadn't thought about it. But when I saw his response to this simple, spontaneous act, I realized that connection had been made. I suddenly saw this young man who didn't have, have a lot, um, who was on his lunch break. And, you know, what was in his back pocket was really just to pay for his lunch. So, that's where we begin. Bit by bit, it expands, it grows. You know, we're cultivating something, something beautiful by the simple small steps. So sometimes you'll hear us saying that, you know, what we're aspiring towards is being like a Buddha or a Bodhisattva. And that can feel so out of reach but it doesn't have to be, it really doesn't have to be. We've looked at Metta, Karuna, Mudita, and Upeka over the week. And I can't stress it enough. You know, when we start small, when we do what we can, you know, within our lifestyle, within our life experience, something magical will happen. When we start to inhabit these practices, you know, and I'm referencing now the, the, the Brahma Viharas, the divine abodes, when we actually inhabit these, when we meditate on them, and when we resolve to try and step out into the world in small, simple ways to start, what happens is, is that with each time we do it, we begin to develop a deeper trust in ourselves, in others and in the Dharma. So faith is growing, Shraddha is growing. And I'm conscious of the clock, so I have loads more notes, so I might just leave it there. So what I would like you to do in the groups is to actually um, maybe reflect on what are you going to bring with you as you step back out into the world, as you step down from that meditative pose that you've been in all week. You know, what small acts of generosity would you like to do? And remember that meditation can also be an act of generosity, especially for those of you with busy lives. I'm just letting people write. <laughs> okay, so I'll finish it there. I'll finish it there. So just remembering the mudra. We can give because we're giving from that place of courage with the three jewels as we step back out into the world. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>